Okay, today we've got a great uh, uh, examination. We're back at unit 4.4. So we did 4.7, which is optimization. We did 4.8, which was applications through economics. We did 4.9, which was Newton's method. We're jumping back to 4.4. We skipped that so we could get a good test in right before you headed home for Christmas. We just didn't have time to fit it in. And this is uh, limits uh, that approach infinity, okay? So we'll go back to a really basic example. Suppose you want to determine the limit as x goes to 2 of 3x minus 1. Those were the days when limits were super easy, right? We say 3x minus 1 is a line. It's continuous the whole time. And so if we just plug in 2, you get a value of 5. Whoops, sorry about that. Right? And so if you say that, you know, limit is x approaches a of f of x, most of the time you just plug in a and you get a result. But I need you to be able to think about what happens as x goes to infinity. See the difference here? We've got an infinity sign there. We don't have a. Okay? So I'll throw out a couple examples here. Suppose that you have a function that looks like this. As x goes towards positive infinity, what does y go towards? Positive, positive infinity, doesn't it? Everybody see that? That's this is an odd function. It's a, you know this is a x to the uh, third power. If we change that x to the fourth power like that, can you see that again? It's positive infinity. Okay, so this is equal to infinity if n is positive or negative. But then if we switch it, look at this. X goes towards negative infinity. As x goes towards negative infinity, what happens to the y value here? Negative infinity, but for the blue it goes to positive thing. So it's negative infinity if n is odd. And it's positive infinity if n is even. What if you have like a decimal? Yeah, it changes the situation very much so. We'll look at a couple examples like that. Um, limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the nth. So what's different now is it's sitting in the denominator. What's going to happen if you plug in a large number for x and then raise it to the nth power? That number is going to get really, really big, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have 1 over a very large number. I'm going to use the large letter n to represent a very large number. 1 over a very large number is going to become a very small number. So in fact, this will approach 0. Uh, so if you think of, say, 1 over 10, 1 over 100, yeah. 1 over 1,000, oh. see as that gets bigger, those are getting smaller in value. Okay, so approach is 0. If you plug in a negative number, does it matter if it's 1 over a large number or 1 over a large negative number? Either way, it's still trending towards 0. zero. There you go, sir. Do you remember this special limit that we had earlier this year? The limit is x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. It is 1. Notice that is not an infinite limit. Okay, It's not an infinite limit. Here, this one says limit as x goes to positive or negative infinity of sine of x. What does that look like? The graph of sine looks like this. As you head to positive or negative infinity, does the graph ever hone in on one y value? It doesn't. So this limit does not exist. Sometimes when people see sine involved in these limits, they automatically think does not exist. But look at this. As it heads towards 0, the limit is 1. 
And then this one, I don't know if you remember sine of 1 over x. We looked at that early on in the year, and it looked like, remember that? Yeah. And we said the limit as it x goes to 0 does not exist because it kind of went up and down. But is it approaching 0? No, it's approaching infinity. So think about this. You would have sine of 1 over a very large number. 1 over a large number is 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. So try not to think just from memory how everything goes. Try to think about what's actually happening with the limit. So uh, we're going to give you some neat ways to confirm your answers algebraically and using derivatives on the test. Today, we want to focus on the algebraic confirmation of these limits. So the limit as x goes to infinity of 4x minus 1. You need to be able to think about this two different ways. First of all, the graph of 4x minus 1 looks like that. So everybody knows as x goes towards infinity, the y value goes towards infinity. We know the answer is infinity. We're going to confirm it algebraically. And here's the best way to confirm something algebraically. You take the limit as x goes to infinity, and you factor out the largest x term. So because I see x, I'm going to factor out an x. And when I factor out x, I'm left with 4 minus what? 1 over x. Can you see that? So you end up with, as you plug in infinity, you end up with a large number times 4 minus 1 over a large number. What's going to happen with 1 over a large number? It's going to go to 0. So notice how that disappears. So you'll end up with four times a large number, which will be infinity. So infinity is not a number, so we use big N to represent large numbers. Okay. X squared minus 3x. I hope you would think to yourself on the test, what shape does this make? Parabola. As x goes to infinity, what does y go towards? It goes to infinity as well. Let's confirm that. We are going to factor out what? X squared. When we factor out x squared, we're left with 1 minus what? 3 over x. Notice how 3 over, um, as you plug in a large number, you get a large number squared times 1 minus 3 over a large number. What's going to happen to 3 over the large number? That will become 0. And when you square a large number, you get infinity. Go ahead. Please try the next one on your own. Thank you, sir. Should we play spoons on Monday? Yes. You're so funny. funny. We should have a work day on Monday. Yeah. We don't have to go to the So notice you're approaching negative infinity and not positive infinity, aren't you? 
10 over negative, uh, negative n, that's still going to go towards 0. And when you square this negative, it becomes a positive. So it still is positive infinity. Again, you should be able to think about the graph and confirm that. Okay. All right. Don't know exactly what that graph looks like, though, do we? Nope. We can no, discover it. We went through these type of graphs during Unit 4, and I tried to give you a little bit of a hint in that Unit 4 right before break so you can look at it and tell exactly what this answer is. Does anybody remember what this limit comes out to be? It is two. Remember I said that when the top and the bottom have the same degree, they're both degree one, you can simply just divide those terms. And here's how it works. We have the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x, and then I'm going to factor an x out of the bottom. When you factor the x out of the bottom, what are you left with? 1 minus 1 over x. And now I'm going to kind of shortcut the process because we've seen this. What happens to the 1 over x? It will become 0. And notice how the x's cancel. And you're left with 2 over 1. So you can, yep, so 2. To be clear, on the test, if it says to show algebraically, you need to show algebraically, okay? You should all be able to look at that and say the answer is 2, but make sure you show it algebraically. All right. For this one, um, is the answer going to be just four? It's not because you can see that this degree is larger than the bottom degree, isn't it? Okay. So if the top degree is larger than the bottom degree, the answer is either going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. So you can't simply just write a number. So we're going to figure it out by factoring out of the top and out of the bottom. What do you factor out of the top? X cubed. And when you factor that out, what are you left with? Good. Divided by, what do you factor out of the bottom? X squared. And you're left with 1 plus 2 over X minus 3 over X squared. Notice what happens is the 1 over x cubed, the 3 over x squared, and the 2 over x are all going to go away, aren't they? And then you have x cubed over x squared, which is going to reduce to just x, right? So that expression gives you 4x. Now, do I plug in a large positive number or a large negative number? So I get 4 times a large negative number, which is going to result in negative infinity. Negative infinity. Okay? And here we have the other example. Um, is the denominator bigger or is the numerator bigger? Which one's bigger in terms of degree? The bottom. If the bottom wins out, anybody know what you're going to get as a result? You will end up with 0. Notice in the top, we have the limit as x goes to negative infinity. There's nothing you can take out of the top, so you just leave it as 6. And in the bottom, you have x squared times 1 minus 3 over x plus 7 over x squared. Again, I recognize that the bottoms are going to go to 0 for the 3 over x and the 7 over x squared. And so you're left with 6 over a very large negative number squared. Does it matter whether it's positive or negative in the denominator? No. Either way, you're going to get 6 over a very large number, which will simply produce 0. So if people have kind of asked from time to time, why do we have to show it algebraically? There are more complicated problems where you, you want to show your algebraic work. However, that said, um, I just remember being in college and uh, there were things that advanced beyond this where the, the professor required you to show the work without a doubt. So it's good to be able to look and be able to tell if they're the same degree, then you can see it's simply two. 
if the top is bigger, you know it's going to be positive or negative infinity. And if the bottom is bigger, you know it's going to be zero. So you have a kind of some luck ahead of time seeing, but make sure you show that work. Okay? Flip it over. Uh, we do not need to do all of these. Um, I'd like to do a couple of them. Okay? And what I would like to do is I would like to do... Um, let's try... I want to see the ones that people maybe get wrong on the test. Um, let's not worry about those. I'd like you right now to focus on this one, this one, and this one. Okay, go ahead and try them. Compare to the person next to you, see how you do. Okay, let's see where you got. Uh, the first one I factored an x squared out of the top and I factored an x out of the bottom. Notice that those can disappear and then, the, and then one of the x's will disappear. So you're actually left with a negative 6x, not a positive 6x. So when you plug in a negative infinity, you have negative 6 times a large negative number. It does produce positive. Raise your hand if you missed the positive infinity and wrote negative, okay? I was going to say we only have one person who is aided. I don't believe that, okay? So, uh, positive infinity. This is a common mistake. On the test, I want to be clear, this would be worth two points, and usually for a negative, I often take off a half a point. I take off a full point for that, okay? Because being able to handle the negative is a little bit more important in that situation, Okay. The next one, notice you factor out the x squared. Those go to zero. You're left with a negative 3x squared. So it's negative 3 times uh, a large negative number squared. 
Notice that you get positive times a negative. Again, the negative catches up. It is a negative infinity. And people will write positive infinity often, and then I say, did you think about that the function was upside down? You know the answer is going to be negative infinity. Again, a way to confirm your answer. And the last one, isn't that nice and simple, right? See, x and x, you know the answer is going to be negative 2 thirds. So the x is canceled, those are gone, and you get 4 over negative 6, otherwise known as negative 2 thirds. So suppose you had this question on the AP Calculus exam and you were not required to show work. Can somebody see right now what is the answer? It is zero. Why is it zero? The denominator is larger than the numerator, isn't it? Yep, that's simple. Okay. All right. So uh, Aiden did ask, well, what about if we have situations where we have, um, you know, a, de uh, a fraction or a decimal, um, you know, for a for a power. So you can hear you you can see that you have a square root, and we can deal with that. It's not that big of a deal. The limit as x goes to infinity, and I'm going to factor an x squared out of the top. I'm only going to show this once. Square root of, and I have x squared will be times five plus two over x squared. And then on the bottom, I factor out an x, and I get 7 plus 1 over x. Now, the part that I want you to see is, can you take out a perfect square out of the top? See how it's an x squared? What is that going to become when you move it out to the front? It's just going to become x. So you have the limit as x goes to infinity of x roots of 5 plus 2 over x squared over x times 7 plus 1 over x. Now the problem becomes pretty straightforward and simple. Notice that the 2 over x squared and the 1 over x go away. Notice that the x's go away. And you're left with the square root of 5 over 7. For the sake of time, we are not going to do this one or this one. This one should be pretty quick. What does the graph of negative 3 sine look like? So as x goes to infinity, what's going to be the limit? Does not exist. So again, as you were to look at the graph, As x goes towards infinity, never hones in on one number. Same thing with this one, isn't it? Does not exist. And then for your last one here, some people say, well, if it involves sine, it must not exist. That's not the case. Um, this one, the limit does exist. I'm going to start by factoring out an x. The limit is x goes to infinity. If I factor out x, what are we left with? Just my sine of x plus 3. Right? We're all good with that? Okay, so then I get the limit as x goes to infinity, okay? And I want you to think about plugging in a value is going to infinity. So we have a large number that we're plugging in for x. So I have n times. And now I want you to think about sine of x. What is the um, biggest value that sine can be? One. What's the smallest value that sine can be? So suppose you had the biggest value of 1. 
or suppose you had the smallest value of negative 1. Can everybody see that suppose it was very large, here you would end up with 4n. And suppose it was small and you got negative 1, you would end up with 2n. Either way, both of those are going towards infinity. Okay, take out your work, your homework and assignment. You get about 12 minutes to this work in here. Put a smile back on hand space. Yeah. <laughs> and problems one through eight are all excellent to do. Okay. If you flip it over to the back side, okay. Don't worry yet about problems 17 through 20, okay? Problems 17 through 20, just let those be for a moment, okay? Let them be for a moment, okay? We're going to talk about those right at the beginning of class tomorrow. So, you guys have the rest of the hour to work. I promise by the end of today, I will have the answer keys posted online. Just haven't gotten my prep this uh, semester yet.